بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله إله الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My respected brothers and sisters in Islam before I start can I just ask everyone to just come closer inshallah it is from the adab of the majlis to actually sit together, inshallah, so that our hearts comes, come together. Brothers and sisters in Islam, from one of the most amazing things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has complete knowledge. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His knowledge is complete. It is in no way like the knowledge of the makhluqeen, of the created. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge is, is never preceded by ignorance, neither is it superseded by forgetfulness. And from this complete knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the unknown, knows the unseen, things that cannot be seen, whether it be things that we cannot see in our present time, and also whether it be the things that cannot be seen, meaning the, the things in the future. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, Alimul Ghaib, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, is the knower of the unseen. Alimul Ghaib. فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَىٰ غَيْبِهِ أَحَدًا So no one knows about the unseen except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَّا مَنِ ارْتَضَىٰ مِنْ رَسُولِ And then, he's, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something very important. And he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only lets some people from the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know some knowledge of the unseen. And this is something very important because you know Rasulullah he had knowledge of the unseen, certain things about the unseen, such as for example the Malaika, such as for example he saw Jannah and Nar, things that we have not seen ourselves. He has for example seen the adab of, of, of certain people in, in, the, in the Qabr, as we know Rasulullah described them to us. He has seen for example Jibreel alayhi salam in his complete form with 600 wings, each wing the size of the whole horizon. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was uh, as shown by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as in this ayah illa man irtada min rasul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that the ilm al ghaib the knowledge of the unseen whether it be knowledge of this present time or of the future is something that is unseen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not let anyone know about it except some amongst the prophets which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills and from this is the knowledge of future events the knowledge of future events and because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very haris over us, who, he was very eager for our own good. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us every single thing that will happen after his death until the day of judgment. Now there is not a single thing that he has that will happen to us except that he informed us about it in, uh, uh, in, 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 in his authentic hadith. As a hadith states in Bukhari, May Allah have mercy upon him that once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he prayed Fajr prayer. Meaning after the sun rose, he, he went to the mosque and he led the people in Fajr. Then the companions say that he stood up giving a khutbah until Dhuhr prayer. That was how many hours? It was about seven hours. Then he got down from his member and he prayed his Dhuhr prayer. And then he stood up again and gave a khutbah until Asr prayer. And then he got down and he prayed Asr prayer. And then he got up again and he told us all about and he gave the khutbah until the sun came down and he prayed Maghrib. And the companion stated that in this whole day of khutbah, the whole day of preaching, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us about every single thing that will happen to this ummah until the day of judgment. 
In fact, Rasulullah Sallallahu was so specific, so specific that Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentioned in an authentic narration, which is a fourth hadith in the Kitab al-Iman in Sahih al-Bukhari. Abu Huraira mentions that I memorized from Rasulullah two vessels of knowledge. One vessel of knowledge I have, I have, I have passed on, and the other vessel I have <coughs> withheld. <coughs> Excuse me. The vessel of knowledge which, which, uh, which he has given is, is of course all the rulings of Islam that he has learned from Rasulullah sallallahu As for the vessel of knowledge that he has withheld, and then that, these are the names of all the rulers of the Muslims until the Day of Judgment. All of the rulers of the Muslims until the Day of Judgment. <clears throat> so here we find that Rasulullah had told us about every specific thing that will ever happen to this Ummah until the Day of Judgment. From these predictions, as an example, is uh, when we talk about Hajj, we talk about Miqat. And as we know in authentic hadith in Bukhari, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentioned that Rasulullah waqqata, he made certain places as Miqat for Hajj. The Miqat is a place that you make your intention for Hajj. And so Rasulullah put certain places as Miqat for Hajj. The Miqat. Rasulullah sallallahu Miqat. And from the Miqat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that Rasulullah sallallahu said, and of course the Miqat he, in this hadith is mentioned in the ninth year of Hijrah. Rasulullah sallallahu said that for, for Ahl al-Iraq is Dhatu Irq. For Ahl al-Iraq, Rasulullah sallallahu put a place called Dhatu Irq. And for Ahl al-Sham, he put a place called Al-Juhfa. Now what's amazing is that this hadith was in which year? The ninth year of Hijrah, isn't it? This is when the first group of Muslims went and did Hajj which is uh, under the leadership of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and then of course in the last, the last Hajj which was the first and the last Hajj which the Rasulullah ever did that is in the 10th year of Hijrah. So this hadith is reported in the 9th year of Hijrah and in it Rasulullah said that Irq is for Ahli Iraq. Now tell me this, were there Muslims in Iraq at that time? Were there Muslims? No. Who were the people in Iraq? The force. Correct or not? The force were, was, was in Iraq at that time and these uh, people were not Muslims. But here we find Rasulullah put a place for Iraq, meaning that he knew that the Muslims would conquer Iraq and so he already put a place wherein the people from Iraq could come and make their make the intention for Ihram. And he put Al-Juhfa, which is a place as well uh, on the way towards Mecca and Medina, Juhfa, for the people of Sham. And Sham is for example Lebanon, for example uh, uh, um, Syria, for example parts of Jordan, parts of Turkey. This is what Sham is. And was Sham Muslim at that time? No. Yet Rasulullah kept Juhfa to be the Miqat of the people of Sham. Meaning that this hadith, just in this beautiful hadith, we have a prediction from, from Rasulullah that Iraq will be conquered and that Sham will be conquered. Subhanallah. So we find that there is not a single prediction of Rasulullah that has, that except that it has, it has come. It has come true. And of course, there are still some predictions that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that we are still waiting for. From them is the fact that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had told us that the victory will be for Islam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran repeatedly, again and again, كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَيَغْلِبَنَّ اللَّهَ وَرُسُلِي لَيَغْلِبَنَّ أَنَا وَرُسُلِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written it, meaning when? He had written it before the creation of the heavens and the earth. Verily, I and my messengers and those who follow them will be the ones who have power on this earth. Will be the ones who have power over people. So we know that the future will be for Islam. The future will be for Islam and the Quran and Sunnah have mentioned this numerous times. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had said, He said, لا تزال, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق. 